Hey, welcome back to Sprager Homestead. This week's video is on assembling a picnic table kit that we bought locally from Home Depot. The first thing you have to do is unpack your kit. So you've got a top, two benches, you'll have four of these legs, two of these cross pieces, and then two supports. And then they give you a lovely package of bolts and screws. So the first thing it tells you to do is to lay out your uh, bench supports and your legs and go ahead and bolt them together. They're all pretty much pre-drilled. We didn't have any trouble with the one we put together yesterday. Um, but you just kind of put them on hand tight because you'll have to adjust them a little bit to get the legs to sit flat on there. But the bolts just go through, through your support. There's a nut or a washer and then the nut. And on the package, it shows that the support is just a regular two by four. These that we got from Home Depot are actually notched. So you kind of, when you're doing this, you need to plan on the, on the little angled piece being underneath the uh, bench, which will only be a big deal when we get over there. All right, so once you've got them kind of loosely assembled, you're gonna kind of put them on the tabletop and this is what we were saying that why you want them loose is you want to try and get that bottom edge flush to the table because then what you're going to do is you're going to put um, you're going to actually drill holes okay and you want to point to where the holes go you're going to point put two holes because you're going into that that cleat there and the reason you're going to pre-drill these is because this wood is not the greatest stuff and you don't want to try and just straight do a uh, screw in there so the directions kind of show this step actually being done from the other side with the tabletop holding the legs up. Either way, it says you probably need two people. So uh, I'm going to come around there and hold that while Kanan does the drilling and get the screw done. We just think it's going to be easier doing it this way after fumbling with it the other direction yesterday. All right, so once you've got those legs screwed on, then it's time to go ahead and tighten up your uh, bolts that are holding your legs together now that they're all set to the right angle. And then what we're gonna do, before we go ahead and do the other side, we'll go ahead and put the angled support on this side. And then we'll turn around and we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so these angled pieces actually had the screw holes pre-drilled in them, which is kind of different because the other kit didn't have that. And then it was kind of weird because they were drilled partially from one side and not the other. So I'm not real sure what was going on with that. But Kanan went ahead and screwed or drilled it the rest of the way. And that angle piece just kind of sits right there up against that cleat. and then sits nice and flush there against the set of legs and the leg support. Now the directions on this does say to go ahead and use a, a, a carpenter square, tape measure, measure it all off. It's not really that difficult. I mean these parts are cut pretty nicely so they kind of, you can eyeball them. Um, I guess if you're really worried about it, you could go ahead and do it the other way, but um, now that we're done with this side, we're going to go ahead and do this other side. Same process, get your legs all nice and level, drill them, screw them, and then put your support on. Alright, so with the legs screwed on, he's tightening the bolts again, and then he'll put in that cross support. So, the thing to know about these is they're probably not cut perfect so if you're putting them on a flat surface you may have some adjustments to make but for what we're doing with them out here in the field um, they seem to be pretty good i did check all the legs together and it looks like they are cut pretty uniformly so i don't think it's going to be a huge huge ordeal to try and straighten them out if you do get some that are a little crooked if you're putting them on something like a you know a patio or something like that but um they go together pretty quick so he's on to drilling out the supports and then we'll get that angle support and then we'll flip it over okay so once you've got it flipped over now the last step really is just going ahead and getting the benches put on 
So the benches are pre-built at least a little bit. They've got a center support already attached. So you just go ahead and you put them on your leg support braces and then it tells you that you can use a tape measure and you can go ahead and measure them off and make sure they're perfect. But we just eyeballed ours. Do you make sure that they are to the end of the support? You want it flush to the table? Yeah, right there. You want it flush out. So we'll move that one just a touch. And then go ahead and drill them before you put your screws in. That's because the way this wood is, um, I would not recommend that you try and screw these in without drilling it. I know it's a bit more of a pain, but I really think if you try and put these screws in without pre-drill, you are going to split the wood. Wouldn't you say so? Yes. So that's one side done. Just do it with the other three sides. All right, so there you have it. Once the uh, benches are screwed down, that is pretty much all there is to it. So I will say this is the $90, $98 and like 47 cent kit from Home Depot. Uh, we had been looking at these for a while and they sold out and they got them back in. Um, but these, I will say, are extremely cheap wood. I would not leave them outside for any length of time without doing some kind of sealant, uh, stain, something like that. They are pretty rough, so you do get some splinters, there are some pitch marks, things like that. And you can see that they did not do the best job at uh, keeping the markings on the lumber to the underside. So if you were going to finish this off nice. Uh, you might want to take a couple hours with a sander and actually do a nice sanding job. <laughs> Kanan. A nice sanding job and get those marks off. Usually the ink's not too deep, so you can usually get them off pretty quick. But um, definitely some stuff you could do if you wanted to, to make these something really, really nice. Now for us, these are our hip camp tables. So we did two of them. There's another one down there at the Aspen Grove. And we're just going to go ahead and put them out here for right now. In a few weeks, when I've got a little bit more time, we'll probably come pick them up with the trailer, take them back up to the house, clean them up, and get them sealed. But for right now, we're so dry, and it shouldn't really hurt them, provided that our campers take good care of them. I do have some notes on there about not cooking on them or anything like that, but they shouldn't be able to do anything that we can't correct with a little bit of washing and sanding. So that is it on how to build a picnic table kit from Home Depot. So the kit goes together pretty well as Nikki showed and even a guy like me that's an engineer that overthinks everything can assemble a picnic table with some minimal instructions. So we used what an impact gun to put the screws in. We used a drill and a drill bit just slightly larger than the shank of the screws itself so we don't uh, we still have threads that would engage the wood and it goes together at least this one right now with uh, having all the tools done yesterday probably went together in about 20 minutes and that includes filming. They're pretty easy to go together and don't be shy about it. If you're looking for a picnic table they're a pretty good value and like Nikki said just go ahead and uh, treat that wood before you really get into heavy use. Do it before not after and you'll be happy with the results. So that's it from this time from Spray Homestead. Happy homesteading.